Well, hello again, as this is part two of last week's video where I showed you um, how to create transparent collage papers without a jelly plate using just gestural marks and using uh, deli paper, uh, text paper, um, newsprint paper. Uh, this I didn't make last week, but this is that brown butcher paper and all sorts of things. So I am going to make my first attempt, which is totally unplanned. The only thing I did was come and just select, try to reduce my choice, because that can be very overwhelming, as you, as you may know. And I'm sticking with that color palette, which I hope I put, yes, I did, in the um, comment section below this video. So we have light blue, turquoise. Let me move this over for you. And the sun is coming out and it's going to make the light on this video so nice. Raw umber, yellow oxide. This is a, um, I'm loving this orange. It's Liquitex again, cadmium orange hue. It just seems to me a truer orange, but I know there's, there's many ways of mixing. And I really like it with white. And um, I add this, cadmium yellow deep hue to it to get even more of an orange so that you'll see um, with my papers different ways and of course adding the yellow to the the cadmium yellow to the yellow oxide which really boosts its hue so we'll see how that goes and I want to my intention this week is to simplify so I know it looks like I have a lot of tools out here, but I really, I really have a lot less than I usually use. This is for scraping. I have my Lego piece if I want. I have my raw umber for line with that really cool top that I need to purchase more of. Of course, black and white in fluid and in the thicker. Um, this is um, a tracing paper made with a jelly plate printer and dabbing it with um, paper towel roll before I then lie the paper on it so it removed and that's how you get those those imprinted circles. So it's all about circles and you know we'll, we'll see what ha we'll see what happens. And this week I made my decision to change how I'm doing my journal page for this series, for at least for a while. And it is, I am using, I'll just show you, the Canson watercolor. It's 140 pound, but it's not in a sketchbook. It's just the page. You know how they're all, well, they're not, they're not, um, the edges aren't glued down like a watercolor palette, but I don't have to deal with the coil. And why I wanted to get to try this is that when we get, when you feel comfortable enough after starting your intuitive abstract art journaling practice, um, I get the, I like to, to rotate it because it makes me look at it a different way and sort of removes this precious, oh, I like that, and it just changes the perspective. So I wanted that option because when we go to the next stage, making a series of abstract um, paintings, small ones, and then I work, I'm working my way up because I'm... Um, trying to, well, I'm not trying to, I am using my intuitive art journaling practice as exploration towards um, larger work once I reach 
once I feel I have more of an authentic, true art. And uh, so welcome. Those of you who might be new here, yes, that's the whole idea of this intuitive art journaling process is discovering our true art one layer at a time. And um, so I'm just going to start. And when I start working on the page here, I'm not going to talk. I'll have pauses of quiet and talking or explanation. And uh, so let's get this page started. Doing this because of its because of its it, it is water soluble made me think oh I really want to try some watercolor pencils in and I'm trying to use colors that I would never normally use which is green this is just the first layers. I'm noticing I'm moving away from cool, even though I do have blues. Wow, this one is, what's this one? Carrot, what's this one? Oh no, there's no name, it's just really a cool color, okay. to the side where I can reach them. So as you can see with my setup, it's pretty straightforward. I've really simplified my table and just because I just needed more space and elbow room so now, as you can see, I'm mixing, and I'm really liking thin, almost watercolory feel. But I want to save some white. This was my favorite piece that I made last week. So I'm just going to start tearing it. Let's see what happens.
So I'm really liking that. And I'm trying not to just do horizontal or things like that. So I'll dry this before I move on. So I love that transparency there. And I'm going to not use this or this right away. And also a carpenter's pencil works well because it's wide on one side and narrow on the other. And when you twist or use your opposing hand. I'm still working on this mark making business. Okay, it's time for the raw umber line. surprised and I'm totally surprised about that I don't know if I like it so this is what I'm going to try to do spritz it because I know that layer is dry underneath let's see if I can lift some yes now if you're worried about getting 
the next page dirty, uh, paint on it, not dirty, you can put some paper underneath. But I'm just not going to do that right now, just because I don't want to interfere with this video. And see that paper curling? Because it can only handle so much water. Hmm. don't mind this grungy feel. It's sort of what I'm aiming for anyway. Okay. So I'm going to come back in with where'd you go? Yeah. A little bit of white. I'm just putting it directly on, which I would never do usually. Just veiling that gives it more of a sense of mystery. And I like that swoosh. Even though that peachiness is still coming through, I'm pushing it back. Perfect. So we'll dry that. I'm going to put the stencil on now for some pattern with the dark because I know I want to put another layer of veiling on top, which might be the yellow oxide, the titanium buff, or white. I'm not sure. And I think we'll use black for that. Make sure I'm using a dry brush. After using a makeup sponge and different sponges, sometimes doing this dry brush technique, I know there's a proper stamping kind of name for it. you can get crisper edges, which I think is a better result. And you can fade out the outer ones. Yes. Wow, I really like that. So I wanna go long and I wanna fade it out. And I've only learned this by building up my experiences of stencil marks, patterns. And once you start your intuitive beauty art journaling practice and keep your notes about it, and notes just take five minutes, if that, just so you can learn. So I have a lot to write about today except I know it's not going to be on the other side. You can use that free reflection PDF that I'm offering there. Cl click the link in the video or on my channel and you can write on it or just use it as prompts to um, make sure you get those important details down. Okay, so this is cool. So now I have lots to work with. 
and oops, there I go, dinging my lights again. <laughs> I'm going to fade this some more. There, that's really cool, I like that. So I'll dry that. Hmm. Nope, too much the same, I want something different. This has some uh, metallic in it. Then there's this piece, but I don't know if it goes. So I'm picking up this color and I'm wanting to do that beauty. And I know I talked about rotating. So after I glue this piece in, just with that, and if it goes over the edge, that's fine. We can trim all that up later. Now I wanna start rotating. Get a fresh perspective. The other way, ooh, that's interesting. Last week, I kept putting my hand in the yellow paint, which was right beside me. So I'm, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna move that over a little bit. And move this over, all right. overlapping. It's sort of enhancing this interesting organic shape. So sometimes your watercolor paper, I'm noticing this buckling, but it is 140 pounds, so I don't know why it's doing that. But after it's thoroughly dry, you can put them under a really big, heavy book, like old encyclopedias, like the ones I collect for my paper and it will, it will get flat again. Oh. Yes. Okay, so let's we'll cut three rows. This is the deli paper that I made last week with white. Of course, I don't want those marks and I'm going to crop these I'm picking up that line from that shape but I want a little more cropping there for now. I 
I need some contrast right in here. I wasn't expecting that, but after I put the blue down, the blue circles seemed better. And notice my layers underneath are dry before I'm putting this on, so I'm not smudging everything. I think I really wanna leave a lot more space than usual, but I am gonna bring in that black. I just don't know how much yet. Love how it melts away. Okay. I really like that. See, now I like it this way, giving it some weight on the bottom. It's very cool. So I'll dry this. circles but since they're very subtle I think one row would be appropriate let's see how much okay it just is on the edge of being too much but let's see what happens if I end up covering up some, or blending them in somehow. And I am going to veil a little bit more. I notice I've got a lot of line here. So I think I'm gonna use white. I'll do that first before I decide, oops, 
It's the long brush. <laughs> look better with a higher contrast or more uh, I should say stronger hue So I'm bringing in the blue further, but I don't want to cut off that metallic yellow orange. And this interesting shape is happening. But I think it needs to be lighter. So it fades into this. They really work because they really faded in. I was hoping that. Okay. Now. See now the energy from this, these lines together. Since this is calm, maybe a tiny section, but it definitely is conflicting with what's going on here. I need something, a different shape, maybe brighter, it's too bright, ooh, that's sort of cool, ooh, I like that, interesting, okay, there's that possibility, oh, what I first did, hmm, Mm -hmm. 
overlap. Yep. Isn't that interesting? It just calms it down a bit, but you're not covering up everything. This goes with that swoosh of paint. So orderly, sporadic, horizontal, vertical, all these differences. Okay, I think, I, I think it's busy enough. Now I'm just gonna finish up with some marks or some pen. So I need to dry so my pens don't get ruined. I'm not going to brayer over that because it's nice and thick. I'm just going to dry it.
just a little. So in the end, this is as much as I want on it. Now I could go crazy with the gold. I don't think I want to go there. I have some beautiful metallic pen here. I might add a little more, but otherwise it's pretty cool. I might bring some blue in there. Let's just see what happens when I do that, but just lightly, like a so now it's created this other shape, which I'm liking much better. And the eye doesn't drop off, comes across. There. That's more interesting. Okay, let's dry this and we are done. Okay, so that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed my new approach. And as you can see, the edge is lifting, but I'm gonna use some more glue, make sure that's around. The new way, so you can rotate and see it in different perspectives. What do you think? Do you like my new approach? Nope, definitely not that way, but it does work somewhat. Here, I might even do something more there. If I was to leave it this way, I'm not sure. I'm just going to leave it. And don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if you're liking this content. Don't forget to download your free self-reflection PDF, which is really important if I'm going to remember all the things that I was following, my intuition, uh, because we're not remembering. We're, we're really not doing thinking. We're responding. And I will see you next week for part three.